All right, this video is to walk you through how to change out the filament. And there's sort of two situations you might encounter uh, when you need to change it out. One is you just want to print with a different color material or a different material property. Another is if a spool of filament that you're using runs out in the middle of the print. And that's what I'm going to walk you through right now. So what I have is an object that um, has about three hours left of printing and it, uh, the unit's going to automatically pause. It's going to give you an alert that says one of the spools run out. Uh, and so what we can see is if I come around to the back side here, the spool one here is completely empty. So we need to change that out. Um, you can see that actually this Bowden tube, this actually has the original filament that was on this spool, it's black PLA still in here. Um, you can see it run up through there and into the print head. So we're going to need to remove that material. We're going to need to get another spool, set it up. We're going to need to do a couple things on the front panel. And so I'm going to walk you through each of those steps. All right, first thing you're going to want to do here is just remove the entire top uh, enclosure. This thing just lifts right off. So you can just take it and then set it off to the side. Okay, next what we need to do is extract the material that's already in the Bowden tube. So we need to remove that so that we can insert our new material onto the spool. We're gonna do that using the display. So I'm gonna click this center button on the left panel. I'm gonna click uh, on the very top left. So I'm, I'm replacing this on extruder one, but you could easily do this on extruder two if you needed to. So I'm gonna click on PDA black, which was the original material. And what I can see is I have three options down at the bottom, load, unload, and change. But only change is the button that uh, is allowed to click. I can't, those two are grayed out. So I'm gonna click change. And it's gonna say preparing. It says preparing to unload material. This may take a minute. So what we sh hopefully should have it is we'll hear the motor kick on. And it will hopefully back out or reverse the material that's present currently in the Bowden tube. This sometimes doesn't work if the material um, is past the motor, which it might be in this case. Uh, and if that's the case, then uh, I'll show you how to manually remove that material. If this works, what you'll see is the material just reverse course and then pull right out the back side, and you'll be able to just remove it directly. So you can hear that sound, that's the reversal of the material. If I rotate this around, you can see the material was actually pushed through the Bowden tube in reverse using the motor that's embedded in this housing here, and we see it completely removed. Uh, so that's the first step is removal of that material. So the display now is prompting us that says uh, remove existing spool. So remove the material spool from the spool holder. And it gives me a button that says confirm. So I need to remove the spool and then I'll confirm that. So this is the rear of the machine. Uh, you can see there's two spools back here. Uh, the one in the rear is almost always outfitted with PLA. This had uh, black PLA, it's empty. Uh, removal of the spool is pretty easy. So there's this um, spool guide, which just helps to feed the actual material into the bottom of the motor, which then drives uh, the material into the extruder head. You can see this thing, actually, if you just lift a little bit, it's just held on there by a little notch. So if I lift up, the whole thing comes off. So that's this, as easy as install and uninstall. So you pull this whole thing off, and this spool guide is still installed directly on the spool. If you flip this around, you can see that there's a little lip there. So just push up a little bit on that lip, and then you can pull the spool guide uh, completely out of the empty spool. All right, so I have a, a new spool. It's actually um, a partially used spool. So sometimes you may be replacing this with a brand new spool, which um, is even easier. This one was partially used. It was in the lab, and so I'm just gonna outfit it with this. 
Um, the most important thing in replacing filament spools is that you never want this filament to uh, leave your grip. Um, as you can imagine, this spool is sort of a spring of plastic under tension. And if I were to let go of this, it would rapidly unfurl. And the unfurling isn't the issue. What happens though, is if you try to retighten that back down, um, this, the actual filament itself crosses over itself. And in doing so, as you try to unwind it later during printing, it creates implicit knots in the spool and it'll bind up and freeze the printer and give you an error. Um, and so you want to always hold on to this. If you're ever removing a spool, that's what these two little holes are for here, is to keep tension on this and feed the filament through those and bend it such that it remains under tension. So I'm holding this. For the spool number one replacement, you can see there's two sides to the spool. There's this one side that has a small indentation, and then there's another side that has this very large indentation. The small, the, the, the small indentation is always going to face outward towards the camera right here. The reason for that is you can see the way that the sun spools is we want this filament to um, go up into the housing. If it were flipped around like this, it wouldn't work. So what we want to do here is take our guide and put that in here so it's just free hanging here. And then I'm gonna hold on, I'm gonna spin my guide a little bit, like this, and keeping tension always on this, I'm going to spin this so that I can get this to feed directly through, so it looks like this, so it doesn't matter exactly where it goes through, it'll just look like that, and then we can flip it over, and then we want to just slip this right back on top, until that button here clips directly into our spool holder. And then I'm gonna take this, and a couple other little tips here, is we want, this has this intrinsic curl because it's been sitting on the spool. We wanna sort of bend this a little bit. Don't bend too much and don't use a plier because it's brittle, so it'll snap. So I wanna bend this so it's as straight as possible. So we're gonna insert it up through this motor, and if it's got a curve to it, it's gonna hang up inside of that motor. I'm gonna bend it a little bit, and if there's any hanging flashing here, uh, we can trim this to make sure it's nice and flat. This one was fine to begin with, but make sure you've got a nice, uh, clean head to insert. You don't want it to hang up. So I've got this thing more or less straight. Now I need to insert it into my actual motor, which drives the filament through the Bowden tube here. To do that, you need to disengage the actual locking mechanism of the motor. Let's just flip this little switch all the way up until it's completely vertical. That's gonna open up the slot. On the bottom of this, there's only one hole. There's a little metal hole, and you're gonna to wanna to find that. It says insert material, so you can see that here. While you're doing this, be careful to not let your spool unfurl. And you can see the material moving up through the Bowden tube, that was pretty seamless because I had a nice clean edge. If it's sticking and you can't get it up, don't force it. Make sure you pull it back out, bend it, clean the tip, and then try to reinsert. So at this point, once you're up maybe an, an inch past where you can see it, make sure you re-engage that lock. Now it's gonna hold it in place and we're good to go. We need to spin the machine around and then go through the remaining props. Okay, so the machine's been spun around and you can see we're still left with the prop remove existing spool and now I can confirm that because we removed it. Place new spool, it says place the material guide onto the new material spool and load them onto the spool holder. It gives you an image of what that looks like but I just walked you through that. So we just did that, I'm going to click confirm. It should auto detect the material. Uh, which it did in this case if it's an Ultimaker brand. If it's non-Ultimaker brand material, you can scroll through this list using the touch screen and just select what the material is. So it automatically detected PLA black, which is exactly what it is, so I'm gonna confirm that. Now it says insert material. Uh, insert the material into feeder one, gently push it, press confirm when the feeder grips the material. So I've already walked you through that as well. That was feeding the material up through the motor housing and then re-engaging the clamp. 
uh, here. So I'm going to click confirm. And what we should hear is the Bowden tube, which you can now see it as it re-engages back into the print head. Okay, and so now you can see it's actually extruding material in real time, and it tells us, confirm when the new material extrudes material, we can say confirm, and we're good to go. Okay, so the last step here then, once you're at this screen, we've already changed out this material, so we need to go back to this top button here, which is actually our active print job, click that button, and remember now, we still have three hours left on this print job, so I need to click resume print, now that we change that out, and it's going to slowly heat up the bed and heat up the uh, print head back to the original settings for the print job, and then it'll re-engage.